Most writers know syntax is the way your sentences are organized. And when revising or editing, they often look at that organization to see if the sentence is clear and cohesive. But there is more thought that should be put into the style of sentences you're choosing in specific situations, particularly when it comes to creating your authorial and character voice. Today I want to talk about syntax, sentence organization, and voice creation. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with parataxis, or simple sentence structure. Parataxis sentences are short and simple. Even if they are combined to make one longer sentence, they're still short and simple because each piece of that sentence is not complicated. I think parataxis is easiest to understand through examples, so here are three different ways to write the same couple of sentences, all of which are paratactic. 1. Ellie wanted a cookie. She slid the chair to the counter. 2. Ellie wanted a cookie, so she slid the chair to the counter. 3. Ellie wanted a cookie. She slid the chair to the counter. Regardless of whether these sentences are two separate ones or combined using a conjunction like so or a semicolon or colon, they are still paratactic because the phrases are short and simple. Paratactic sentences tend to create a choppy rhythm, which can be off-putting when it's not used in the correct situation. If you're trying to describe something or have a really emotional scene, that short, choppy rhythm might not be what you're going for. But if you're writing an action scene, those short, choppy sentences are great because they mimic the fast-paced heart rate and breathing rate of both your readers and your characters when they're experiencing tension, danger, or exhilaration. When you're going back and revising at the sentence level, Pay attention to the type of sentences you're using and the tone they are setting for your piece. Let's take a deeper dive into paratactic voice. Paratactic sentences are particularly useful when you're trying to build a childlike, naive, or impartial voice. When you're using paratactic sentences to build voice in this way, it's because these people aren't thinking deeply about the subject in a complex manner. Instead, they might be thinking at a surface level, or maybe they're just reporting what's happening around them without inserting their opinions or judgment. Patrick Ordnick uses paratactic sentences in his book, Europeana, A Brief History of the 20th Century, where he creates a non-judgmental voice to report the facts of some extreme events, like those horrific ones from the Holocaust. An example of this is, traveled in sealed freight cars that remained closed throughout the journey. They had nowhere to go to the toilet, and when someone died, the corpse remained in the car. Some concentration camps were intended for labor and others for extermination of the Jews. Even though that first sentence is a run-on, it's a run-on composed of paratactic phrases. Each of those pieces could be broken down into one short, simple sentence, so it's still paratactic. The unique thing that Ordnick is doing here is he is just reporting the facts. He's not saying how awful this was. And by not saying how awful it was, it almost makes it worse. By creating this omniscient, imparcial voice, point of view, and tone, Ordnick is able to report facts without the bias of his culture. In dialogue, paratactic sentences can make a character come across as cold or distant or volatile and immature, depending on the situation. Paratactic sentences in dialogue are direct, and that directness can be off-putting, or it can be a reflection of someone not aware of the emotional impact of their sentences. These are also more likely the sentence structure someone who's a child would use, so they can make your characters come across as more childlike or naive. Think about your character and the given situation. Are they more childlike? Are they more complex? Or is this a situation where they really do need to be blunt and direct? That might dictate the type of sentence they use. Let's take a look at the other side of the spectrum. Hypotaxis or complex sentence structure. 
Hypotactic sentences are long and complex, where paratactic sentences are short, simple, and to the point. Hypotactic sentences are composed of not just a simple phrase, but of independent clauses, dependent clauses, and prepositional phrases. And they're using all of the tricks of the English language. Again, I think this is easiest to understand through an example. So let's take that situation of someone wanting a cookie and put it in a hypotactic sentence. The scent of melting chocolate and baking butter made Eleanor's mouth water, but her new diet did not allow the gooey goodness of cookies, not even fresh morsels destined for her grumbling, ungrateful uncle. A hypotactic sentence works better here than a paratactic one, because in this instance, Eleanor is not just simply wanting a cookie. Even though she does want to eat one, she also wants to eat it so her uncle can't have it. That's a more complex desire and a more complex emotional state. So a more complex sentence is used to convey it. Hypotactic sentences are particularly useful at conveying multifaceted compare and contrast situations. They're also good for detailed scene setting. And because they're more intricate and require more focus to decipher, they make your readers pay more attention and work a little harder. They can be really good at reflecting the emotions of a character who might be feeling overwhelmed or wondrous at a new situation. And because the sentence is long and complicated, it makes the reader feel that way at some level as well. Think about what your scene is doing. If it's not an action scene, if it's a slower moment in your story, hypotactic sentences might be better here because they're gonna slow down the pacing. They're gonna make your reader have to slow and work harder at deciphering your sentences, but not to the point where it's work. It's still simple enough that they should be able to understand it without becoming frustrated. So hypotactic sentences can be a really good resource when you're trying to slow the pacing after an intense action scene. Take a closer look at hypotactic voice. Because these sentences are long and complex, they are often used for characters who are philosophical, who think deeply about things, or who might be trying to show that they're better or smarter than everyone else. Hypotaxis can show your characters are well-educated, it can make them seem verbose, or it can make them come across as someone who's kind of a pompous ass. <laughs> It all depends on the situation and the way you're using these sentences. Either way, when someone speaks in a hypotactic sentence, they are paying attention to their situation and they're putting more effort in than someone who might be speaking in a paratactic sentence. For example, in Never Home, Laird Hunt often uses hypotactic sentences to get across a more complex situation. Here's an excerpt. One of the women who wrung her hands asked him if he had seen her darling boy in the fights. He did not answer, but he did gulp and look away. And when, in that retreat, his eyes found mine and jumped like they had had yellow jacket stingers shoved into their centers, I knew I could still have my hope. In this moment, we see a male character sympathizing with a female character who has lost her son during the Civil War. At the same time, we see that male character recognize the narrator in a different situation and get up. This is a complex emotional experience for this male character. He is both feeling for this woman, this mother who's lost her son, and being like, oh my gosh, this is this person. The complex sentence reflects his complex situation. A character might speak through hypotactic sentences to convey a more complex or nuanced thought or theory, they may also just be long-winded or, again, trying to appear smarter than they are. So think about your characters, and if they are deep thinkers, they might speak in these more long, complex sentences. Or if they are trying to impress the people around them, they might speak in long, complex sentences instead of the short, simple ones. One character might use the different sentence types in different situations as well. I'd like to share advice from an editor on building voice with syntax. Earlier, I mentioned a lot of writers don't think this deeply about their sentence structure, and that's perfectly fine. A lot of the use of paratactic and hypotactic sentences is intuitive. It's something you do because you've read and you've learned that way. But if you come across a scene where the pacing isn't quite right, or your characters all sound the same, 
that's when you need to start looking at your sentence structure. Maybe your sentences are long in an action scene and that's why it's not quite working. Or maybe your sentences are short and choppy in a scene that's meant to be descriptive. If it's in dialogue, maybe all of your characters are putting their sentences together in exactly the same way, and that makes them sound the same. So maybe change up the way your characters are arranging their sentences. Maybe some use longer sentences and some use shorter ones. I don't necessarily mean go full Yoda. If that's your style and that's the type of story you're going for, then definitely do that. But even subtle differences in sentence structure and word choice can differentiate your characters' voices. Both paratactic and hypotactic sentences have their places, and you don't have to do the extreme version of either one. A portion of your sentence structure is your own authorial style and voice. So maybe your paratactic sentences aren't super short and simple. Or maybe your hypotactic sentences aren't super long and complex but they are your version of that and your readers will pick up on that. Which type of syntax do you use more often and why? Share that in the comments below. And for more videos designed to help you build your characters' voices and master other aspects of writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a worksheet on how to use synonyms to further build your character's voice. And now it's your turn to play with your syntax, to use paratactic and hypotactic sentences to ignite your ink.